malefics are placed in good dignity. What does this mean? Dignity means the circumstances for that planet to act favorably, which suits his. Yeah. That's what dignity is. True. So when we say that, uh, is it so? What people think? Your question is correct. I will tell you what people think mm -hmm. internally when they hear this question. They think that maybe if the bene if the malefics are well placed, they behave like benefics, maybe, or maybe they're. Maybe. Oh, yeah. they are malefics. So they are they are in bad dignity. So maybe they behave like benefics. <laughs> this is a subtle thing which people sometimes feel, you know? but we have to understand that they may be in whichever dignity. They will always remain malefics. <laughs> yeah. So when we say a malefic is in good dignity, what does this mean? It means that planet helps you to become independent. Or it means we are in a situation that uh, which uh, by which we from our past lives we have been trying our best to become independent in that area of life in the regarding the houses with the planet lords or where the planet is sitting. Suppose fourth house, then it can be education or sixth house or job or anything like this. And suppose a malefic is badly placed. So what does this mean? This means that uh, we have not cultivated our no, no work to do. Yes. So that means the see the, the sign will tell the awareness. Yeah. Awareness means uh, how much uh, how much do you know or that what should you do? <laughs> yeah. How much intelligence do you have regarding that planet? So for example, suppose. Uh, somebody has a debilitated Saturn in the fourth house because Lord Ram has Saturn in the fourth, so I will link it to his example. Suppose somebody has a debilitated Saturn in the fourth house. Now, in case of Lord Ram, he has an exalted Saturn, so he is fully really aware of how to deal with traits related to his mother. Yes, and because Saturn is retrograde, it can show the stepmother, KK, not. Kaushalya, his own mother. And what happened when Kekri had told uh, to Lord Ram that, my dear Ram, time to pack your bag. <laughs> time to go. It's my son who will sit, not you. So what did Lord Ram do? <laughs> did he start crying? No. no. Or did he start you know, panicking? <gasps> Kya hoga? Kya hoga? Kya hoga? <laughs> no. Yeah. No panic, no. Uh, he's he's aware of how to handle that situation. He is aware of the mother. He is aware of the fact that a mother can have uh, or will have, not should have. That a mother can have preferences for her own son. True. So he does not blame KK. <laughs> Exactly. So where in the Ramayana, Lord Ram says, you know, oh, this wicked KK, because of her, I am suffering now. True. But the question is, does he blame Mantra also? Because ultimately, KK just listened to Mantra. But does Lord Ram say that, oh, it's this wicked Mantra, if only she was not the Mantra, for those who don't know, she was the uh, servant of, or she was like a Sakhi, a friend of uh, KK. And uh, does Lord Ram say that, oh, actually, you know, if only this mantra was not there, I would have been in the throne of Ayodhya today, you know, because she would have not polluted the mind of my mother, Keki. But he doesn't do that. Yeah. He doesn't do that. Because in his horoscope, for example, he's uh, Cancer Lagna, as we know. So who is the Lord of the Sixth House? Or cancer, it is Jupiter. Sagittarius is in the sixth house. The sixth lord is also exalted. Guru is in his lagna, exalted in Digbala. So he is very aware of how to deal with servants and uh, people who are under you. Yeah. Very aware of uh, there is this example which you will find. Like for example, in the Ramayana, what happened? Uh, Vibhishan. Uh, had come to surrender to Lord Ram because Ravan had declared that 
Gibishan, yeah. either either you stay on my side or or you'll be killed. So Gibishan ran for his life and he went and he came and fell at the feet of Lord Ram. And then what happened? Mm. All the other soldiers they started that suspicion that oh this uh, this this person is Ravana's brother. Uh, <laughs> Uh, elder brother is like this, younger brother will also be like that. Don't listen to him. He's a spy. He will kill you. He will come and destroy all the all the negative things if you read the Ramayana. Of course, there was one person, and that was Hanuman, who said that even in the even in family of demons like uh, Hiranya Kashyap, there has been great personalities like Prahlad and Bali. So just because somebody is born in a uh, in a Daitya or Asura family, it does not mean he is also like that inherently. And then Anuman says, when I went to Lanka to find Sita Devi, there was only one house where Ram was written and that was his house. Yeah. It was the house of Vibhishan. And then Lord Ram, what he says, okay, I accept you. <laughs> so the moment he sees Vibhishan, now of course, he is Vishnu himself, he knows everything, but Imagine it's like a normal person's chart. <laughs> so sixth house is what? Punishment basically, right? Sixth house is the house of punishment. So uh, when somebody has fallen on your knees, what is he behaving like? He's behaving like Saturn because Saturn is actually the servant, the slave. I mean, yeah. you can use all those terminologies, servant or subordinate or slave or you know, whatever you want to use. But anybody who is who has completely collapsed and one who does not have any shelter, that is what Saturn is. Because Saturn is the 8th house, you see. 8th law, 8th uh, Karaka of the 8th house. And 8th house is the graveyard. So, uh, somebody who has fallen to, onto your feet is like Saturn. And his Saturn is exalted and his Jupiter, temporarily his 6th lord is also exalted. So, the moment he saw Vivishan, he understood. Oh, he's not like Nava. And what does he do? He says that, now you, I coronate you as the emperor of Lanka. <laughs> yeah. That moment only. So the thing is, this has happened because his Saturn is exalted and his sixth lord is also exalted. He is highly aware of what to do and what not to do. So that so called malefic, now see Saturn was malefic. Just because he is aware, it doesn't mean that, you know, uh, Kaikai or Mantra became very good. Did it happen? No. Yeah. So did the. You must have higher awareness. Yeah, did the exaltation change the results of that planet? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so whenever we say that an exalted planet gives good results, we need to watch out our <laughs> statement. Sure. Exalted it will uh, make us go through tough conditions as well. Yeah, that that will depend on the houses and what which dasha we are running, but. We will have that awareness that why that is happening. Because there was one uh, person who I met here in Germany. He said uh, he was a bit interested in the Ramayana. So then he asked that you exemplify the law, life of Lord Ram. But uh, I would like to ask you a question that if you see the life of Lord Ram, it's like a series of disasters and failures one after the other. You know, it's like back to back failure. <laughs> Yeah. What is so great about his life? Can you explain? Then I said, well, because he is playing the role of a human being. So he shows that human beings will, human beings have failures in life. That is what avatar, that is avatar means uh, avataran. Because in English, there is not a translation for the word avatar. Because if you say Ram is an avatar, in loosely is translated as incarnation. But yeah. incarnation is not a not the word which should be used for avatars because incarnate means incarna, karna means flesh. So it's like saying coming back to flesh again. But yeah. as Krishna says in the Gita that my body is completely spiritual, I do not come into matter. So incarnation is not a good word for the avatar. Avatar means avatara, means one who descends as he is. So when Vishnu takes the avatar of Ram, he shows that. Uh, human beings have suffering and uh, but how should a person behave when there is suffering 
that is the greatest lesson and that is why he is Maryada Purushottam. It's not because that his life was rosy. That's not the reason. He is aware. See, there, there again the game of free will. <laughs> now imagine this was a normal person. You know, and imagine there was, you know, like somebody like Duryodhana or Dushasan. You know? <laughs> so these are these are such people when everything is there. Even then you are not happy. You know, like for example, for in case of uh, Duryodhan in the Mahabharata, what did he not have? He is the best example of Saturn Ra. Saturn's the biggest trait of Saturn is uh, dissatisfaction. So Duryodhan always dissatisfied. And then who who is your uh, what do you do then? You you take help of Rahu. <laughs> because Rahu is the one who can eclipse the sun, right? Sun and moon. Yeah. So then you take help of Rahu. What you do? Oh, Bhima is small. Let me put poison into his, you know, kheer. And he was very small. He, he's doing this as a young kid. Can you believe it? <laughs> I mean, he he wants to kill the Pandavas or insult Draupadi when he's elder and, you know, he's, he's in his sense. That's different. But as a child, can you believe it? Have you seen a child telling that I want to murder somebody? Very, I mean, I have not seen till now. <laughs> I have not even heard. Maybe there, there is somebody. But imagine, you know, like kids, small kids, and not the teenage or adolescents. They were small. They were very small. They were in the ashram that time. That time he hatches this Rahu, invites Rahu there. What he says, I will kill this Bhima. <laughs> All right. So he's a typical example of Saturn and Rahu. So, so that's the that's the greatness of Lord Ram. That. Even there was a sequence of disasters and in fact, after he comes back to Ayodhya after 14 years, when uh, his vanvas is over, officially he's done, then what happens? Then he, he meets Bharat and then he asks to Bharat that how is mother Kekri? He asks. Yeah. And then Bharat says, don't ask me about that wicked lady. <laughs> I have nothing to do with that. She has ruined our entire yeah. family and I will never inquire about her. And then Lord Ram chastises Bharat. He says, you are her son. So it is your duty to inquire about her well-being. It is your duty to ask how is she... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is your duty to, you know, take care of her. If you are behaving like this, what will happen to her? And, and then he, he's not, he's not thinking. He doesn't say to her. Anyways, you know, I know she's wicked, but forgive her. You know? <laughs> he doesn't say like that. Yeah. Then what he says? Uh, now, if you go to bit before in the Rama, and I'm trying to show how the free will is important. So. When uh, Lord Ram is banished, then uh, Lakshman comes to know that uh, <laughs> Lord Ram has been given Balaram. <laughs> and then Lakshman, you know, he is Balaram and his anger is like, <laughs> yeah. his anger is at the peak always. And then he takes up his Dhanush, his bow, and he says, you know, all oh, this old hand packed. He says like this. He does not say father. <laughs> he directly says this old and this handpacked, uh, like they say, handpacked husband. So he was meaning that this uh, Dasrath is not uh, under the, the word of his gurus or our tradition. He is just listening to his wife. So he's like a handpacked husband. Oh no, this uh, Dasrath has given you these instructions. So let me tell you that before uh, he tells you to do this or before you go I will go and destroy entire Ayodhya and the army and then I will see where Bharat sits. You want a kingdom? Now you sit in this graveyard. <laughs> and then what does Lord Ram do? He does not say oh, finally you know, somebody is on my side. You know? He is my man. No. He doesn't say that. In fact he, he, he says you know what nonsense are you speaking? You should not say like this. He is your father. Yeah. And then Lord Ram makes a very peculiar statement. He says, my dear Lakshman, what can be done? Destiny is very powerful. <laughs> he said that. 
Now somebody may say, oh, is this not weakness? That he's bringing destiny? No, he's not bringing destiny. Uh, he, he, that's not his weakness. He's telling that there are some things in your life which are beyond your control. Yeah. Getting that is beyond my control. I cannot control Keke and her mind. You know? I can, but I don't do that because that's her free will. Yeah. So, yeah. when the malefics are uh, well placed, I would say, then we are more aware of how to use our free will properly. And when yes. the malefics are badly placed, then the awareness is not there. Then what happens? The uh, the, the ghastly sights come out. Which means, suppose somebody is... Uh, uh, another uh, way to check the Saturn is, you know, how much... How much can we uh, tolerate insults? You know, that is another way. How much can we tolerate? Mm -hmm. So like for example, uh, Kaki told Lord Ram that you have to go now. But he didn't say, oh, how, how dare you say like this? You know, I will not go. This is an insult to me and my manly hold. You know, blah, blah, blah. He didn't say like that. So then he said that, okay, if that is what is your desire, I will go. And in fact, he says to Kaki that, why do you have to use my father as an instrument? You directly tell me that go to the forest. I want Bharat to sit. I will leave my kingdom. Yeah. And this we can see not only now, of course, I don't know Yudhishthir Maharaj's horoscope, but we can see this in the case of Yudhishthir Maharaj also. Like once there was some problem and then he said, you know, anyway, I, I always knew that Bhima will be a better administrator than me. So I will go to the forest now and Bhima will sit in the throne and he will rule Hastinapur. Yudhishthir Maharaj once said like this. Yeah. So this is something which we have to understand that the point is just because the benefic, uh, the malefics are badly placed or sign-wise in a bad dignity, they don't become benefics. Yeah. Or they don't make circumstances like benefics do. Or just because they are well placed, it does not mean again that they become benefits. If the awareness of dealing with uh, our karma, because the malefics in a true sense show the karma which we can't change. Yeah. Because again I said Jupiter 2, 5, 9, 11, they, they will show free will. Why? Because happiness. When you are happy, what you do? Like uh, there was once, uh, I will not take his name, but a very big liquor baron. He said that uh, my business, I will always be successful in life. <laughs> so somebody asked why. And he said, because when people are happy, they will take wine. And when people are unhappy, then also they will drink. Mm. I will never go in loss. Of course, he's in serious loss now. But the thing is... <laughs> Just because you are happy doesn't mean uh, you are doing great things in life. But the probability that you can do better things is much more in comparison to if you are yeah. unhappy. But yeah. still, if the benefits are very strong in your chart, whatever misery comes in your life, you will never deviate from your principles. Yeah. And that is what Lord Ram, uh, that is what he shows is Jupiter is also exalted. You know, his moon is also there in his own sign and therefore uh, not only is he not affected by the malefics in a bad way I mean internally but he's also very much uh, he's also very much aware of how to deal with these circumstances like he, yeah. he told to uh, Vibhishan that uh, like when he told to Vibhishan that you, I coronate you as the emperor of Lanka so then uh, Sugriv had asked him a question Suppose today Ravan comes and surrenders that, okay, it's my mistake. I had abducted your wife. Please take take your wife back. It is my mistake. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. Of course, Ravan would not do that because of his puffed up ego. But uh, Sugriv said, suppose today Ravan comes and surrenders to you. Then what will you do? Because you have told Vivishan that you, know, you are now the next king of Lanka. So what will you do? Very tricky question, right? But then Lord Ram says, I have no problem. I will put him, I will put Ravan in the throne of Ayodhya after I go back. 
So there is no way that uh, he can compromise.